Hey, what's up, everybody? So we're back in Slicer, and I just found out that Prusa is renaming Slicer Prusa Edition to Prusa Slicer by Joseph Prusa. Uh, so there'll be some additional Prusa-ing going on. Uh, no longer having to battle whether they're, it's Slick 3R or Slicer. So uh, it is now Prusa Slicer. Uh, this is the Beta 2. Um, I don't know what will change, but right now it's just a name change. Um, and as you see, I have, a, I have a 20 millimeter cube. So what are we doing here? We're going to do a quick video to show you how to uh, learn modifier meshes. Um, and this is this is a neat little trick test uh, experiment for yourself. So I got this cube. Let's go ahead and make it a bigger cube. So let's go ahead and make it a size. Uh, on the Z, we're going to make it a 10. On the Y, we'll make it, ooh, I don't know, 100. And on the X, we'll make it 100. And now we have this squarish rectangular prism. <laughs> uh, we have this object here. So we have a box. And to make a modifier, all we have to do is right click on the object. And there's add part, add modifier, add support enforcer, add support blocker. But we want add modifier. So we're going to go ahead and put a box in there. So here's our box. It puts a 20 by 20, uh, I think 40 box on here, something like that, or 20 by 20 by 20 box. And we're just going to put it right here. And that box is going to be our modifier mesh. And we're just going to right click it, and we're going to add infill, and we're going to add layers and perimeters. So fill density, we'll leave it at 15. Uh, we will change the pattern from that to, let's say, honeycomb, and no top layers no perimeters. So when we hit slice here, you can see it modified it. So if I actually take the layers back, our stock layers, uh, our stock infill is 15% gyroid. And it made this cute little, you know, honeycomb infill thingy here. So uh, kind of neat. And we can keep doing that. We can keep messing with this by adding more. So let's add a cylinder. And, oops. I keep doing that sometimes. Add modifier, cylinder. Can't go too fast. It freaks out. So add a cylinder. We'll right click it. We'll add uh, layers and perimeters and infill. And we'll instead of gyroid, we'll use um, Archimedean cords and uh, we'll go 30%. No perimeters, no top layers. And slice. And there we go. There's an Archimedean cord. And the nice thing is you can change this. So let's say, ah, I didn't like our commuting cord. That doesn't look like a fun infill for me to show. So we'll do Hilbert curve and slice again. And boom, there it is. So you can kind of go through and you can kind of see the power of modifier meshes. We can keep adding uh, modifiers. So we're going to add a box. Oh, I waited. I went too quickly. We have to wait for that little thing to snap into place. Add modifier box. And we'll add the box right there. It's so fancy. We'll move this over. And we'll add infill, and we'll change, and we'll add layers and perimeters. Fill density, 60%, ooh, cubic, and zero, and zero, and slice. And there it is. So you can kind of get an idea of what Modifier Meshes does. This is just a neat little practice routine. Um, this isn't how to make it awesome. This doesn't, you know, you, you might be able to, to figure out how this is awesome. But as you see, we can modify however we want. I mean, and we can also go back. We don't have to keep these settings. So if uh, I want this here and I want it to be larger, I can make it larger and, you know, put it right there and go back to slice. So you're not constrained to how things you know exist here. So uh, we've got a couple, you know, we have three different infills, we have different infill densities, and it's kind of fun. So I mean, this gives you, not a great idea, but gives you kind of an interesting look into how this works. But another fun thing, it's my favorite thing, is you don't have to lose this progress you've done. Uh, let's say you were actually gonna use this for a project, like, hey, you know, I wanna show off the different infills and densities, um, I'll just do this fancy technique here and make my own modified rectangle thingy. So <laughs> we can go to file, we can go to export, we can export as AMF. 
and we'll delete the dot zip because it's keeping the original name so and we'll save that on our desktop right there and save and we can delete this whole thing and we can go to file and go to import import stl object 3mf and we can go to desktop and there's our 20 millimeter cube boom and there it is so we didn't lose our progress uh that's the best thing about this is uh, you know, you can do all these modifier meshes, change things around, uh, print it and be like, oh man, I should have put an extra thingy here, or that didn't work out. Uh, you can save it as a 3MF, you can come back later and then rework it. So again, I just wanted to go real quick into modifier meshes. I want to give you an idea uh, and a way to just kind of practice it. This is a great way to practice how it works. Because again, you know, you don't have to use those. You can click on this and do add different settings so you can do extrusion width so we'll do infill extrusion width hit ok so now we have all these same settings here on the right hand side so our extrusion width uh, instead of being 0.45 millimeters we'll do something like uh, 0 0.60 and slice so now we have some thicker infill just on that and this can you know you can start to see that this could be pretty powerful when you're doing prints especially things that have uh, you know, areas that you want stronger or it's stacked on top now. So you can actually just stack different infills on top of each other, however you desire. So, I mean, there's some cool things here. So again, quick little overview on modifier meshes. This isn't super detailed. I'll go into something a little bit more complicated later, but I just want to give you a good overview on how it works. Um, you know, you can always go back um, and change them. So if you click on this, and click on this over here under the generic box, generic box one, generic cylinder, generic box. Um, you can change things. If you don't want it to be honeycomb, you can make it line. And you can just do whatever you want. It doesn't have to be, oh, that's kind of neat. I actually didn't know that. I've never used line infill. I'm learning. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I hope this helps you just get a quick idea of how they work, how to use them how to save them so you can go back and edit them again using those AMF, um, exporting as an AMF. So hope that helps. Uh, stay out of trouble, and I'll see you soon, all right?